What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode. We are moving into week six. And we're heading about every other week, it seems like. Life is coming at us. I know Sig has uh, Sig's been busy with life as well. But uh, welcome back to another episode. We're going to cover week six this week. Had a uh, decent week last week. I know we didn't do an episode, but uh, had some decent weeks with some bets and fantasy and everything else. But uh, getting into week six, it's uh, it's been a rough season, I think, for a lot of people, just in fantasy football. Um, rough season for some teams in general as well. I know the, uh, the Titans can't get it going. The Jaguars finally got a win coming off that last week. Um, but, man, moving to this week, Thursday night football, uh, 49ers and Seahawks. We're getting right into it. Uh, 49ers and Seahawks. This game is, man, it's going to be interesting because I don't know how the 49ers are going to be able to really screw this up. Um, it's their game to lose, in my opinion. Uh, they are going into Seattle for Thursday night football. But the way that the Seahawks have been playing, they're extremely consistent, but as are the 49ers. Um, they got Kittle back. Uh, Jordan Mason in the backfield. Uh, Ayuk, Debo's back. I mean, they've got... They've got everybody back. Purdy stays healthy. Hands down, 49ers should walk away with this one. Um, I do see that the Seahawks are definitely going to put up a good fight. Geno Smith can sling the ball. Kenneth Walker is doing his thing. Lockett's around. Um, DK Metcalf is, you know, they, if they shut down Metcalf and they put it on Lockett, you're more likely going to be able to win the game. Um, Lockett is a seasoned veteran, but definitely is not somebody that's going to be able to carry the team anymore without the help of DK. Um, Kenneth Walker can do his thing as well, but it's really going to be on the back of Geno to make the make the passes and, you know, his check downs and call off into, into runs um, because the 49ers defense is nasty as well. So um, look for the Niners to possibly run away with a 10-point 10, 10 win on this one. Um, I know we've been hit or miss. I think next week also I'm going to put out the stats for the episodes that, that we've done, I won't do anything else for the episodes that we've done to see kind of where we're sitting at pick-wise. Uh, and we're kind of, we'll uh, have maybe a little longer episode next week. Hopefully we can record next week as well. Um, yeah, look for the Niners to win this one on about a 10-point victory. And it should be a, I, should, I think it's going to be a dominant one. We'll see. Uh, moving into Sunday games. At 8.30 in the morning, you've got the Jags and Bears over in, I believe it's London again they're, they're at. Either way, overseas game, over the pond, across the pond, hop, skip, and jump, Bears, Jaguars. Uh, Bears are going to be the home team in this one with Caleb Williams going against Trevor Lawrence and the <laughs> getting their first win, Jaguars, last week. Um, it was a fun game to watch last week, watching Coach Pedersen do his thing um, with Trevor Lawrence. Got kind of exciting to watch how they did their thing, but uh, I don't know how this game's going to come out. This is a early morning game overseas. Uh, Jaguars are the team that constantly is over there. They're the team that if you know, they're going to pull a team, it's going to be the Jaguars. I think they even talked about calling them the Monarchs if they end up pulling them over there. Um, but anyways, I, I think with this one, I think the Jags are going to uh, gonna fall this week again and not... not uh, not bounce off off that win they got last week. So I think it's going to be a Bears game. Bears are going to win this one hands down. Um, by a touchdown, if not two, uh, look for Kerry Williams to possibly pop off again this week and, and check down to Jonathan Swift. Um, I'm not looking much out of, out of Keenan Allen. He's, he's hit or miss and very inconsistent. Um, and that could just be a Caleb Williams not getting the ball like he needs to, but... Keenan Allen is a, is a veteran player, great player, great receiver. Um, he's just kind of hitting his time. And DJ Moore is, is definitely doing his thing as well. So watch for them guys to do do what they can and uh, to win that game by at least a touchdown, if not more, than that one too. So early morning, Sunday morning game at 8.30 Central. Again, it's all these times we're in Central time for whenever I say them. So, uh, yeah, just look for the Bears to, to win that one. I'm not putting anything else on the, on the Jaguars to do anything. Uh, then kicking off into the noon games, Jaguars, no, Scar sorry, noon game, Cardinals, Packers. Uh, Jordan Love is back. He's going to try and do his thing again. Kyler Murray uh, is looking really good this year. He's running the ball. He's controlling the ball. He's controlling the offense. He's running the offense like he should be. Um, something's going on with him. He's got a fire letter underneath him. He's playing really well. 
Uh, I think the fact that he's got Marvin Harrison Jr. playing at the level that he's playing at as a rookie. Uh, James Conner has stepped his game up as well in the in in the running back. The defense is doing very very well as also. Um, Packers just don't have the the receiving core that they need. Um, I don't believe in Josh Jacobs either. He to me seems like he's turning into another Eddie Lacy. He looks like he's packed on some weight, um, not moving like he used to. Definitely can still move the ball. Don't get me wrong. He can. He still can be dangerous if you just let him run. Uh, but I don't think he's going to be as dangerous as he has been in the past when he's with Las Vegas. Um, watching them play, Christian Watson, you know, being their what's it, their number three receiver now. Um, just some of the receivers they have, I don't think they're going to be able to really put up any points against the Cardinals in a manner of making it a game or being a threat. Uh, will they score? More than likely. Um, but the Cardinals should also be able to just run away with this one. This should be an easy game for the Cardinals. Packers will probably make it difficult, but I do think the Cardinals take this one um, in a 10-point 10 10 point game. Take the over in this one. Take the spread. I'm pretty sure they're going to cover the Cardinals well. Uh, next new game, Browns versus Eagles. We are in a much, 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 much needed win category in this one. We're in a must win. There are rumors circulating everywhere that Sirianni is on the hot seat. As you, if you have not seen or did not see, they fired the Jets head coach, Matt Sala, Ryan Sala, Sala, whatever, his, I can't remember his first name, but uh, fired him this morning, this be this Wednesday, October 9th, fired him, and he is now gone. It looks like the Georgia, um, Georgia, the college football team, Georgia Bulldogs head coach, looks like he's stepping away from that team, is going to be the Jets head coach. If that's true, I've seen, read a few things on it. Don't, not sure if it's true, but uh, we'll see. Um, but man, the Eagles are in a must-win situation against the Browns. The Browns are imploding, starting with their quarterback, going up against their coach. Um, Watson is looking like a child on the field, acting as if he doesn't care about the team, doing what he wants, walking off mid-play. And look like, but again, I don't know what was going on. It was really weird um, with that team. That team is is dangerous and can be dangerous if they get on the same same page. But AJ Brown's back, Devontae Smith is back, Lane Johnson's back. Um, they're gonna start the uh, the young Iowa native Iowa Hawkeye player Cooper DeJean. He's gonna play in the safety position as well. Um, so a lot of guys are stepping back into the roles from their starting positions for the Eagles. Should be a should be a dominant game. Not going to be. This is going to probably more likely be a field goal game, close to giving me a heart attack the entire time I watch this game, um, as I'm cussing, screaming, throwing stuff at the TV. But uh, the Eagles should win this game and better win this game, and it better not be a field goal game. My guess is it will be. That is if the they decide to kick field goals. If they don't kick field goals early when they would need to, then it's going to be a very rough game. Um, hopefully Jalen Hurts can come out, you know, throwing the ball smart, making complete passes and Saquon Barkley. They unleash him early and often to let him go through go through the line, do his thing like he always has been. At the beginning of the season, and whenever he essentially gets two or three plus carries in a half some reason they're not doing it but hopefully they unleash him early and let him do his thing open up the the passing game so Jalen doesn't just get crushed and again that falls back on the offensive line for not being around so look for the Eagles to hopefully take this one in more likely a field goal game uh last minute field goal to win it more likely that's what's going to happen um moving to the next noon game the four and one commanders which I have not said anything like this in a very long time Take on the, I think, what are they, 2-2 two and two Baltimore Ravens? Ravens are looking good. Derrick Henry obviously looks good. Lamar Jackson is looking decent. Um, he's throwing the ball well. He's running the ball well, for sure. Um, they're just, they're just not, they're, they're missing, they're missing things here and there. It's still a very strong team and a very, uh, very tough team. It's probably going to make the playoffs. I, I'm not, I'm not doubting them. In any way, I'm not putting down in any way. They're they're a tough team. They're gonna 
prospect, whatever they've got going on. Um, I've watched Lamar a lot more this year than I have in the past, and he looks he looks really good. Um, but Jane Daniels on the other side with, on the Commanders, this kid is impressive. Everything he's doing with this team, uh, the throws he's making, the decisions he's making, you know, as a rookie, you know, he's not making every right decision, but he is making a lot of the right decisions. And the way that he's moving the ball, his checkdowns, you know, he's working with his coach. He's, I read this morning, he's in at like 4 or 5 a.m. every morning working on, you know, the playbook, working on everything else he can to become a better player, working to become a leader in the locker room. And having a guy like that on your team coming in as a rookie says a lot for that team. Um, being in the NFC East, I don't like it. But again, that's what's going to happen when you get those those hungry Driven kids coming straight out of the draft and want to become, become something in the league, and he's definitely doing it. Um, this one, this is going to be, I think, it's going to be a tight game, going to be a tough game. Uh, I do think the Commanders lose this one and drop to four and two. I think the Ravens pull this one out to go with three and two. At that, I do think that uh, that is it. The Commanders are not two and two or three and two. I'm not sure which one they are, but uh, I think the Ravens pull this one off. Commanders drop, but I think it's going to be a hard fought game. I don't think it's going to be a blowout by any means. Uh, so, yeah, look for that one to be fun. Look for Derrick Henry to maybe uh, be stopped in that com- with that commander's offensive line or defensive line. He's uh, He may not be a factor in this game. It may be on Lamar's, Lamar's arm, Lamar's feet to, to run this one. So, look for them to shut down Derrick Henry. If they, if they can shut down Derrick Henry, they can win the game. But if he gets loose, it's over for him. So, yeah, look for that one. It's going to be a fun game to watch at noon. I'll probably have a few highlights here or there because I'm watching the Eagles game straight up. But, uh, yeah, look for that one. That's going to be a fun game to watch as well. Next noon game, Texans-Patriots. Patriots are playing uh, – they're, they're benching Brissett and they're playing Mayo. Uh, why? I don't know. I just don't know if they're going to tank the season. Texans uh, – tough game for them last week as well they lost nico collins he went to ir uh i mean they have other threats tank dell you know who can be a threat uh and probably will be a threat in this game with uh nico collins being out i think with this the patriots are gonna have a, a fresh quarterback in who hasn't i don't think he's played very many snaps this season um so i'm looking for the texans to really roll on this one and just take it and and roll with it run with it win this game 10 point touchdown, touchdown to 10 point game. Should, shouldn't be very exciting. Should be a roller for the for the Texans. Uh, but I don't see them really doing anything. Moving on to the next one Buccaneers Saints for another noon game going into New Orleans where they have their rookie quarterback starting because Derek Carr has a, a back problem after, as you saw last week, he got hit, tweaked his back a little bit. So he's going to be out for a couple weeks because I think they play, I think the Saints play two games in like a nine day span. So they're gonna they're gonna rest him for two weeks and then let him come back on, on that third game. Um the Bucks are looking nasty. Bucks are looking good. Baker's looking very impressive. Mike Evans is doing his thing. Godwin is is right there as well. Um I think Mike Evans got his hundredth touchdown uh last week as well. So he's still doing it. You can't stop him, you can't keep up with him. Uh, just a veteran, all around great receiver. And Baker's putting the ball in play where they can make a play on the ball, catch it for touchdown, yardage, whatever they can do. Um, they've got an impressive Irving, uh, their running back, their their backup running back. The kid is looking very, very impressive with what he can do. Same same thing with uh, Rashid White. You know, I counted him out at the beginning of the season. I thought he was kind of washed up, but he's doing his thing as well. That uh, that tag team duo they got back there on the backfield is going to be impressive as well. I uh, don't think the Saints are able to come back and you know bounce back from their losses that they've had uh, in, since week two. You know, they had their last win in week two, and since then they've lost everything. But I think the Bucks roll on this one. Look for a, you know this one could be a blowout, a fourteen pointer if need be. Unless Kamara gets going, if Alvin Kamara can get going and hit you know three, four, five, six touchdowns in one game, you know then that's that's a big plus for, for the Saints. Um, Taysom Hill will probably be behind center as well for quite a bit if he plays. I know he was also questionable uh, as well. So I don't know, they're riddled with injuries right now at the quarterback, you know, backfield position. So, but I'll put my money on the on the Bucks to win that one. Uh, 
it's going to be either extremely close or a blowout. You know, it's not going to be anything in between, I don't think. So, yeah, look for the Bucks to win that one. Next new game, Colts-Titans. Oh, boy. Um, depending on who the Titans quarterback, if they're going to roll with Levis, the Titans are going to roll. Titans are not going to win this game. Um, you have Flacco. If he, if he starts the game for the Colts, but Richardson out, but I think he's got an ankle or knee injury. If Flacco plays and Levis plays, the Titans are going to fall. If the Titans t- start Mason Rudolph, there's a chance for the Titans to win this game. Uh, he's he's definitely a quarterback that's been a starter. Will Levis has obviously been a starter as well. But Mason Rudolph has... Sh- he proved himself last week when he came in for Levis when he got hurt. Um, showed some real poise in the, in the pocket. He was doing his thing, completing passes, directing the offense you know, sh- how he should. Um, same thing with Flacco, though. Like, Flacco's been around the league. Uh, he is he's a Super Bowl champion, you know, MVP. The guy has done his thing. Uh, one thing for sure, he needs to uh, just continue what he did the following week with the Colts and, and run that way. So we'll see what happens. But uh, if Levis starts this game, Colts are going to win, hands down. Mason uh, starts, like I said, it's, it'll be a toss-up. But I'm going to roll with the Colts in this one. Uh, and more likely a tight game, sloppy game, ugly game. But I think the Colts take this one to round out the, the new games. Next game is going to be a 305, Chargers Broncos. Divisional game. These games are always fun. Uh, Broncos looked good last week. I watched Nick's play, and he was putting some decent passes up. You know, not all. Not all passes were amazing. But he's he's looking decent. He's, he's kind of a little, it's kind of exciting. Got to watch. Now, being a young quarterback and rookie, he's fun to watch. Um, Chargers are, they're imploding, it seems like, as well. Looks like some of their teams around. But uh, I'm, I'm going to take the Broncos in this one for the division rival in that. And, uh, man, I think it's, it's going to be a close game. It may be another, you know, last second field goal to win that one. It should be a fun one to watch. But I think, uh, I think the Broncos take that one as well. So, jump to the next one, Steelers. Versus the Raiders. Two teams that can't figure out their quarterback situation unless they want to flop back and forth. Um, Minshew may start. Minshew may not start. Fields may start. Fields may not start. They don't know. Russell Wilson apparently is healthy uh, coming off his cap, yeah, cap injury. So there's, they're teasing at him possibly playing. I have no idea what they're going to do. Um, but... This one, I, I probably wouldn't even watch this game, to be honest. Uh, it'll be, it'll be boring. I mean, there's no way, no way around it. It'll be a boring game. It'll be a sloppy game. The only one I would like to watch would be uh, Crosby, to see if he gets in and hits Fields or Wilson or whoever else is behind the, uh, behind center on this one. <laughs> but, uh, and that, that is if they don't still sit Wilson, and eventually end up trading him before the trade day, deadline coming up. I have a feeling he does get traded. He gets traded soon. Because uh, it's it's odd that he's in he's in full uniform every week, but is it playing? Because he has a cap injury, but yeah, he's suited up in case he's needed. Um, but I I don't. It's very odd. I think he gets traded, and it could you know go to Miami, could go somewhere that needs a quarterback. Who knows? We'll see uh, where he falls, or maybe he doesn't. Maybe he just stays. But I do. I think he gets traded. So uh, and I think the Steelers also win this game. As well, I'm not looking for anything impressive, and that's that's just a, a toss-up guess at this point. Um, next one, 325, Lions-Cowboys. The Lions started off very, very strong, looking great. Uh, I think they've kind of fluttered a little bit. Jared Goff is definitely looking good as well. Um, I want them to just come in and smash the Cowboys. I want them to humiliate them. I want them to hit Dak as many times as they can, stuff the run, and shut down CeeDee Lamb every which way they can. Uh, let St. Brown go off. Let Goff do his thing. You know, th- that duo right there is is very, very impressive. And uh, let, you know, my, my fantasy team, let Montgomery get a couple touchdowns. You know, why not help me out with some points? You know, let him do his thing. Uh, Jameer Gibbs, you know, whatever he can do as well. But, um 
fun, fun game to watch. This one, I'll, I'll be looking forward to watch this one as well because I want to see the Lions just stomp a little the Cowboys. And I'll take the Lions in this one and probably a field goal to a touchdown win for the Lions. Because I don't want to smash Cowboys. You know, if it's a bigger a bigger win, great. Next 325 game, we've got the Falcons versus the Panthers. Kirk Cousins, man. Kirk Cousins looked good last week. Um, he is, he's been playing a lot better here recently. Uh, he got, he's doing his thing in prime time. You know, when he's with the Vikings, he wasn't doing anything. You know, he looked like a, like a fool during prime time and now he's, he's looking a lot better. Uh, the Panthers can't figure out what they want to do with their, with their quarterback. You know, they benched Bryce Young and Andy Dalton, you know, took over, played decent, but, uh, I don't think they'll be able to beat the Panther or the beat the Falcons in this one. Falcons are gonna more than likely roll in this one. Look for B. John Robinson to go off, do his thing. Hopefully they can find Kyle Pitts and make, and consistently hit Kyle Pitts for yardage. You know, possibly a touchdown, who knows? Um Drake London. Man, if this kid, you know, gets another concussion, look for him to score five touchdowns. I mean, the dude got looked like he was done in the game, went out, came back, just popped off. Insane amount of yards, touchdowns, everything. Everything he could do, he was doing great. Um, and the fact that Kirk Cousins is finding him, I, I think it's going to be impressive to see what he does with him and to push Drake in his, in his career for sure. So, yeah, look for the Falcons to roll in this one. Moving into the Sunday night game, Bengals-Giants. Oh, boy. This is the Bengals game to lose. If they cannot... Just consistently run this run this game in their their manner. Let you know, Zach Moss is healthy to come back with his ankle sprain that he had or ankle injury that he had. Um, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, those two guys, a dual threat receiving core. They should have no problems, you know, getting yardage on this on this Giants defense. The Giants defense is subpar at best. Uh, their offense is. Jarvis is a joke for the most part. I mean, Daniel Jones can hit. He can throw throw the ball, but uh, he's just not he's not consistent enough to do anything to be a threat, I think, right now. Um, it, could they beat the Bengals? Of course. Of course they could beat the Bengals. I don't doubt that, uh, but I do think the Bengals win this one as well. I think the Bengals will roll to a 10-point lead, if not more, to win this one. So uh, unless the Giants start... Start clicking and, uh, and all, all kinds to pop off. We'll see. But uh, I'm taking the Bengals on that one at a 10 point win. Monday night football. Bills Jets. Bills with a uh, banged up Josh Allen. We'll see how they do. Definitely going to be interesting to see how they do. Um, you shut down Brace Hall, you shut down the team. Aaron Rodgers got his head coach fire, fired. Uh, the guy, I'm starting to learn, he is nothing but just cancer. Uh, it happened in Green Bay. Now he moves to New York Jets. It's starting to happen all over again. I mean, I don't know what's going on, but Sala seemed to want to come in, and he was going to fire the offensive coordinator or defensive coordinator, one of the two, and all of a sudden he gets fired and escorted out of the building randomly, and they don't... They haven't disclosed why he got escorted out of the building. Uh, he didn't get to talk to the players. He didn't get, you know, a goodbye speech, a, you know, thank you speech of any kind. He was just brought in that day, fired, and escorted out. Uh, very, very weird uh, mannerisms with that team. The Jets as a whole organization has, has just been odd for a very long time. You know, they, they have finally have a team that can do something, and I, I thought – you know, Saul was a great coach watching with the 49ers. You know, that, that defense he was running and coming over to New York and running that, and I thought he was going to do really well. I thought he'd be there for a little while longer. I didn't think he was going to randomly get fired. Um, but again, the Bills can shut down Brees Hall, and you have Rodgers running around, scurrying around the backfield. You're going to win the game. Uh, the past two times that I've watched Brees Hall get shut down, the entire offense struggles. Rodgers, you know, you give Rodgers the ball when you're when they're losing in the fourth quarter with you know three minutes left. There's a chance Rodgers is going to come back and win. That's what Rodgers does. Um, 
he's very well versed in it when he played with Green Bay. He's he's definitely a threat of quarterback, and if he gets the right uh, targets within Alan Lazard, uh, Garrett Wilson, you know, guys like that, he can he can win a game, no problem. He doesn't need Brees Hall, but if Brees Hall just takes that uh, takes the focus away from him, opens up the passing game. If he can get the running game going, Brees Hall is a great running back. Uh, this whole team can be great. They just have to get out of their own way and. If Rodgers is going to mess it up for him, that's what he's doing. Um, but I'm going to take the Bills in this one. And what I'm hoping is going to be a fun, exciting game and not just, you know, a blowout. I don't want I don't want to see a blowout with this, these two teams because these two teams are fun to watch. You know, James Cook, the guy's doing great behind in the backfield. Uh, crazy runner, fun to watch. Um, and, you know, just... The way that they have, the way that Josh Allen commands that team as well is great as long as he's, hopefully he didn't get too much of a, a headbang from them last week when he essentially got knocked out. But we'll see what uh, what comes of it. But look for the Bills to win this one in a tight tight game. It should be fun, but uh, we'll see. And, uh, yeah, so next week we're going to bring all, I think it's all good. I've only done four episodes. So we'll bring all four picks, all four weeks picks and we'll kind of go through week one I think it was week three four, one two four and now six so I missed three and five so we'll do that we'll go through and we'll, we'll kind of see what we how I've how I've done the picks and uh feel free to send me send me any comments let me know how you've done your picks you know just let me know and uh again if you guys want to be on the on episode let me know you know I'll sit there and I'll ramble I'll talk back and forth uh, I'm kind of flying through these pretty quick, so I'm trying to keep this a short episode. Not everybody's got a whole lot of time to sit here and look, listen to me ramble, say the same thing over and over about all these teams. But um, hopefully, hopefully, I've done decent in my picks. Uh, if you've listened to it, you've kind of tried to do anything with them. Whoops, my bad if I mess them up for you. <laughs> but uh, definitely have some fun with it. Let me know your picks, let me know your thoughts, uh, fantasy wise. Just spin a wheel at this point. It's hard to even keep up with how fantasy is going. It's it's so all over the place. Um, some bets, man. I hit. I almost hit another big one last week. I was one touchdown away, which I don't remember who it was. It was somebody that should have had a touchdown. Oh, Kelsey, I think it was. No, who was? I don't remember. Somebody that should have that should have had one. Uh, pissed me off, man. I missed missed it by one. Another another big payout, but. Um, some easy ones if you want, in my opinion, to look for. Um, starting with Thursday, I'm just going to run through who I think is going to hit touchdowns. I mean, look for in the Niners Seahawks game. I mean, you could probably put your money on Jordan Mason to get the touchdown. I'll, I'll pick one, one to two players per game. 49ers Seahawks, Jordan Mason. I would almost bet money on get the touchdown. Uh, Jags, Bears, DJ Moore. Touchdown for that. Uh, or. Komet, one of those two. Uh, Jags are not very good against tight ends, so look for Cole Komet to possibly get a touchdown on that one. Uh, cards, Packers. Um, man, you could probably almost go James Conner. James Conner is probably going to be able to run all over that defense with uh, with Green Bay. So, yeah, that. Um, Kyler Murray, also. I would, That's going to be a big payout, too, if you can hit Kyler Murray. Um, I think he's scrambled for almost a touchdown, almost three of the games. He had that 50-yard run last week to score the first touchdown of the game. But, uh, yeah, look for, I'd say, Kyler Murray or James Conner. It's going to be a running game, too, so definitely he can pass, too. So you have your your pick in that one. I mean, there's plenty of targets and Cardinals. I won't, I don't know who I'd pick for Packers either, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't take Josh Jacobs. I think shut him down. Um, Browns, the Eagles, I mean, Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper's going to score it's this uh, Eagles defense, defensive backs, they're going to blow coverage. Amari Cooper is more likely going to score once, if not twice. Um, look for their, their third, I said a third string receiver, which I can't think of top of my head who it is, to possibly get one as well. Or uh, if Njoku's healthy, look for that as well. Look for where the tight end is uh, to possibly get a touchdown as well. Um, I mean, Barkley, I mean, he's Scored, I think, every every game. So, Saquon Barkley is almost a guaranteed 
one in this one. I could say AJ or Devontae, but Barkley's my, my guarantee. I'd say Barkley's almost a lock in this game. Um, same with Amari Cooper in this one. I don't think he gets shut down. They'll, they'll try, but they, they won't be able to. Uh, Commanders Ravens, if they shut him down, which I'll be very impressed if they do. Derrick Henry, uh, dude's a freight train once he starts going. I'm, I'm gonna bet you know, he gets he could definitely easily get a, get a touchdown on this one. Uh, look for Scary Terry also to get one. I think him and Jaden Daniels have made a connection. So look for McLaurin to get a touchdown as well. So Derrick Henry or uh, or McLaurin or both in that one. Texas Patriots, maybe Ramondre Stevenson. That's the only one I could probably even say. That I could probably see getting a touchdown on this one, as a as a high high percentage. Um, Bucks Saints, Mike Evans, and Kamara. You know that one's going to be tough, but I would say Mike Evans or Kamara, in that one. Colts Titans don't even pick. I wouldn't even wouldn't even waste my money on trying to pick anybody in that in that team, at all. Chargers Broncos same thing. Wouldn't even waste trying to throw a, a parlay anything with these two teams. Um, Carlton Sutton. No, I mean, I, I wouldn't even mess with it. Steelers, Raiders, another one. Wouldn't even touch it. Those three games wouldn't even touch. Uh, Lions, Cowboys, you're looking at, uh, man, I would say St. Brown, but I don't think he's going to be, I think he's going to possibly be shut down. Uh, I would put Montgomery at a high percentage. Um, CD Lamb. If, if they, you know what, no. I don't think uh, I don't think I put it on CD Lamb. I think they they rattled Dak and him and Dak and CD Lamb are fighting whatever they're doing, but I don't know if I don't know if I would. You know, this one you you could probably skip this game too, if not Montgomery or Gibbs. Be, be two that I would you know I would pick between that. Falcons Panthers after the game last week, uh, I would almost say you probably got two. That are more likely going to score here against the Panthers. Bijan Robinson, Drake London. More than likely, those are two that are almost a lock. I think if, if Drake plays like he did last week, look for that to happen there. Uh, Bengals Giants. Psh, Jamar Chase. I mean, the guy's more likely going to win that one, win those battles in that backfield. Uh, Bills Jets. James Cook. I'm not going to say Brees Hall. I'm not going to say Garrett Wilson. James Cook. Definitely for sure. Look for him to get one, if not two. Same thing with like Kamara. Uh, yeah, I'll uh, and I'll throw out some bets. You know, next week as well. I'll let you guys know what uh, what I did for betting this week, and we'll see how we did. May or may not have some extra money. Probably not, because like I said, I don't I don't bet small. I don't throw a whole bunch of money. I try to just get stupid, outrageous bets. To have fun, you know, it gets me invested in other games. Same with like fantasy football. <laughs> So I do it to have fun, get invested in other other teams that I normally don't watch, like the Broncos. I don't normally don't watch. I don't watch the Patriots. You know, those this games like that. I watch the Buccaneers a lot more because of fantasy football. You know, I I enjoy it. It gets me, you know, back into everything that is football and have fun with it. So again, if you want to be on the episode, let us know, reach out, uh, hit us up at two guys one gamepad. We are on Instagram, Facebook, everything, anywhere, you know, and you can find these episodes anywhere else. You know, the, we have podcasts. Uh, check out the merch store, two guys one gamepad.com. We have all kinds of merch, crazy stuff all over the place. Uh, also, Thursday nights, we also play video games. Myself and Sig play more Warzone. Always Warzone. Doesn't change, never will change, probably. I don't know. He tries to give me a change. He wants Phasmophobia, but it's not out yet on the PS5, so I'm waiting on that. It's announced. It's supposed to be this month, so we'll see if it comes out ever. Um, I'll be streaming. Warzone tomorrow night. I'm over on Twitch. Sig is on TikTok, YouTube, Kick, Twitch, wherever else he wants to stream. He sends it everywhere. But uh, he spreads himself out. I stay I stay true to Twitch right now. Uh, so check me out. Roggle on Twitch. And then Cybermerk Sig is over on, like I said, TikTok, YouTube, Kick, and Twitch. Check him out there. And until the next one, bye, bitch. <laughs> <laughs>